Hey everyone and welcome back. Um, I'm Dominic Dantes from Coindesk and this is my colleague. Lawrence Lewitton. <laughs> yeah, we hope you guys are enjoying Consensus thus far. Um, we'll be your host for our next uh, couple of uh, sessions. I'm sure you've seen us through and throughout. Um, we're really excited for this one. And we'll be joined by our sponsor, Nexo, um, talking about... Um, corporate trip. What is it? Corporate, corporate, corporate treasury treasuries, management. yeah. That's the, uh, treasury management, you know, yeah. we're just following the, <laughs> the movement here from infrastructure. <laughs> so it's, it's good, good to see like a lot of the back-to-back -back movement. What are you most excited about, Lawrence? What am I most excited about so far or coming up? Yeah, it's coming up in the treasury management. We've seen a lot of movement lot. there. You know, a lot of companies have been announcing yeah. it over the past quarter. Yeah, and I mean, you know, we've been talking about Elon Musk and, uh, you know, obviously this is, you know, where does it go on the on the balance sheet here for, for Tesla? Well, here it is. Yeah. So I think I think we're 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 going to we're going to come in soon. Uh, is, is Anthony ready? Anthony was born ready. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's the that's the right answer. <laughs> yeah, well, with Elon Musk tweeting like crazy, uh, you have to be prepared for anything. So really excited of the topic we're having today. So glad uh, that, uh, you know, we are at Consensus doing this with Joanna. She's always great. So uh, Joanna, would you like to kick things off and, you know, do a quick fire yeah. round chat here? Yes, definitely. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Joanna Ossinger. I'm the Asia Crypto Czar at Bloomberg News. And I'm joined by Anthony Trenchev. So Anthony is co-founder and managing partner at Nexo, which is a regulated financial institution for digital assets that currently manages more than 15 billion for over 1.5 million users across 200 jurisdictions. And he's a former member of parliament in Bulgaria. Um, Anthony, it's great to be with you as always. Um, so before we talk about the title topic, I do wanna ask you about the news of the day as we just discussed. So. Elon Musk is now talking with North American Bitcoin miners about publishing current and planned renewable usage. They're talking with miners worldwide about it. They're forming a Bitcoin mining council. So what do you think of the news? And is this just damage control by the miners or is it something more? It's damage control of the financial industry as such, uh, if you permit me that joke. But uh, no, seriously, first off, this is a great initiative. Uh, you know, shout out to Michael Saylor. I uh, understand he was the organizer uh, for this particular gathering where, you know, Elon Musk met with uh, quite a few and a large, uh, uh, um, uh, the larger miners from the United States. Now, obviously, uh, you know, this uh, Elon Musk was the one to set the world on fire with the, you know, renewed considerations with uh, Bitcoin's uh, carbon uh, uh, footprint. So it is good that, you know, this wasn't like a one time thing and like, you know, he's completely out and there's like no open mindedness to the process. Uh, because it is a concern, and I'm saying this as a Bitcoiner, as large as a fan of Bitcoin uh, uh, as you can get out there. So it, it has always been a concern. Truth be told, it's not just for the Bitcoin industry. It's just like any industry that is uh, electricity and energy intensive. You know, it has to clean up its act. And it's good that we're seeing here some proactive uh uh, you know, actions, proactive actions, what a, a <laughs> poor phrasing, but uh, you know what I'm saying. And uh, last but not least, quite frankly, I was wondering the entire day what gave this boost to the market. And it turns out there was a large meeting that a few people were privy to and a lot of desks uh, uh, initiating, initiating positions uh, based on what was inevitable. Yet another tweet from Elon Musk. Uh, you know, you have to think of the poor retailers who, you know, actually are not in on the whole thing and, you know, were somewhat front run. And if this was traditional markets, you know, the SEC would have had something to say. But this is crypto, still the Wild West, still uh, hugely volatile. I'm glad to see uh, this, uh, you know, upswing because we have been down a lot last week. And, uh, you know, it is good news. Definitely good news. Okay, and 
What do you think about the volatility of the past week? Is that changing companies' minds about getting into digital assets? Well, it didn't do us any favors. I mean, <laughs> anyone who's denying that and saying it's a net uh, positive for the industry, it's not. I mean, obviously, crypto is volatile, has been for its entire lifespan so far, you know, of 11 years, uh, and is going to remain volatile. Now, with Elon Musk getting in on the bandwagon and then jumping off, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, a few short weeks after, at least in terms of uh, the actual implementations, not his holdings uh, on the balance sheet, which I am sure we'll talk about uh, uh, later on. Um, you know, it's it's like uh, someone made this uh, parallel. It's like being poor and getting rich and then getting poor again. It's better if you didn't get rich <laughs> in the first place because it's so much more uh, painful, you know, uh, with this back and forth. A lot of glass was broken. So what I think, quite frankly, I made a prediction. I was in, on your media. Uh, it was a Bloomberg television where I said that I predict that, uh, you know, 5% of the S&P 500 companies will end up with crypto and more particularly Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Uh, I think that, you know, such a high profile figure such as Elon Musk, you know, uh, being himself volatile about crypto uh, is not accelerating the timeline. So the revolution is going to happen slower than we think. Uh, and maybe not such a public way, you know, there will be companies, high net individuals that will be accumulating uh, Bitcoin and other cryptos, much like, you know, we found out on consensus of all places that Ray Dalio uh, owns a Bitcoin, which he disclosed in uh, another fireside chat. Uh, so I think there will be a accumulation. It is not going, though, uh, to be as quick as some people, myself including, uh, have hoped for. And quite frankly, I yearn for a time where single tweets by people, no matter how powerful are, don't have such a sway over uh, the crypto markets. Okay. Um, so what types of companies are you seeing express interest in digital assets? Uh, well, a couple of those, uh, you know, high net worth individuals, they're not companies per se, mm -hmm. but in terms of purchasing power, they're comparable to a mid and large uh, sized company. So definitely a lot of high uh, net worth individuals, both in terms of mm -hmm. people who got to the point of being high net worth individuals uh, of crypto, they're now looking for, you know, full banking uh, facilities, something like we at Nexo are happy to be providing, you know, loans, uh, exchange between uh, the different asset classes, whether it's between assets uh, uh, that you're holding right now or something that you borrowed against, you know, the earned product whereby you can generate yield in kind. We see, you know, people who already have experience with, uh, with crypto just accumulating and now uh, banking uh, with that crypto in a manner that is, uh, you know, uh, what we know from the traditional sector. We see other high net, uh, uh, high net worth individuals, people who are uh, not had, didn't have anything to do with crypto up to, you know, this massive uh, rally that we saw, which brought it onto their radar. And they don't want to be late uh, to the party. Oh, they are late to the party. <laughs> uh, but now they got a second chance of uh, getting in at lower prices. So we see uh, such individuals like uh, just last week, I had a talk with two uh, such individuals who between them hold uh, more than a bit uh, uh, between the two of them hold more than two billion asset, uh, uh, dollars in assets. And they're looking for exposure in, into crypto. We see companies that are native to the crypto business, whereby previously they would accumulate you know, via their payment solutions, Bitcoin, and they were usually exchanging it for fiat currencies. Now they are uh, putting it on the balance sheets, holding on uh, to them for extended periods of time. So we see hedge funds, a bunch of different uh, companies. But quite frankly, the most exciting part is where you have company that didn't have anything to do with crypto and is just allocating for reasons that, you know, uh, all the Wall Street uh uh, titans, uh, whether it's Stanley Druckenmiller or Paul Judor Jones or now Ray Dalio, this notion of uh, creeping inflation of this expansive monetary policy, 
being reminiscent of the 1970s uh, and uh, high rates of inflation, CPI numbers didn't uh, didn't help, <laughs> uh, you know, either. So we're seeing a lot of companies allocate uh, a small percentage points, you know, one to maximum 5% of crypto, uh, you know, just based off this notion that they are better off being in the market and perhaps losing some of that, uh, you know, potentially half of it by, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, or at least temporarily, than just being outside of this uh, crypto mania because like their investors and their companies, they are giving them a hard time. You miss this entire bull run. What were you doing? Why are we paying you management fees? So really, really uh, uh, institutional adoption is coming probably not as fast as uh, people would have uh, hoped for. Okay, interesting. So what digital assets do you think companies will be adopting? You know, most of the news has been about Bitcoin and you have an isolated ether here and there. Is that, will it basically be those two? Will it be broader? Will it be almost all Bitcoin? Yeah, I, I do think that the, the lion's share will be allocated to Bitcoin just for a variety of different reasons. You know, Lindy effects, it has been around, uh, around the longer, longest and what has been around for 10 years tends to be <laughs> around for at least the next 10 years. Uh, so this is one thing. Then obviously uh, it is unique in very, very uh, uh, important areas, uh, you know, having this proven scarcity, mathematically proven scarcity, you know, uh, to bring in Elon Musk yet again, you know, the other uh, truly scarce asset is gold. But, you know, there have been explorations and photos of Mars and, you know, uh, excavations there, which suggest that on Mars, there's a lot of gold. So it might not be as scarce as people think and as investors think. So <laughs> it might turn out that the, the, the truly scarce scarciest, the most scarce uh, assets out there is Bitcoin. So uh, in this uh, situation where we have just because of the COVID pandemic, you know, central banks uh, are printing around the world close to $8 trillion, which are now competing with your dollars for the same finite uh, or, or, uh, amounts of goods and services. It is no surprise that Bitcoin has been performing that well. Uh, it is the most resilient, you know, every now and then there are rumors about the flippening, this idea of Ethereum taking over Bitcoin as the number one asset. And we saw it during last week's correction that, you know, push comes to shove. It is Bitcoin that uh, performs the best, you know, <laughs> in this case, meaning that it fell the least. So uh, this, like for more mm -hmm. traditional investors, this is uh, very important. For me, I am quite personally a long Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin well, obviously Bitcoin, but then uh, Ethereum as well. I have been so since the uh, mid 1400s, which was in January, I allocated uh, for me a considerable uh, uh, position in Ethereum. It has been treating me well up to last week, but then yet again, uh, you know, being up 30 percent. I think it is, uh, there is a chance that it's going to perform very, very well because precisely of the renewable sustainability, uh, renewable energy and sustainability debate. If you are uh, an ESG company or fund, you know, you can be having this tail risk that, uh, you know, the markets and the regulators and the world deems Bitcoin to not be, uh, you know, um, environmentally uh, env uh, friendly to the environment so you're better off allocating something to uh, an asset class such as ethereum which uh, at the end of the year finally is going to move to uh, proof of stake which will reduce the carbon footprint by 99.5 percent i think there's going to be a huge topic uh, going forward last but not least because of the current administration in the united states and their priorities so i think that uh, eve can do also very well. And then, you know, we will just have to wait and see what else uh, uh, plays out well. Some of the DeFi offerings obviously will perform well, uh, not to toot our own horn here, but like we at Nexo, our native token, we had a very good rally. We rallied from two cents, uh, 20 cents up to $4. Now we corrected just like anyone, but like, you know, we're almost up 100% from yesterday. So recovered some of the losses. So 
there is going to be the hard assets such as uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, you know, the, 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 the technologically innovative ones that perform well. And then companies which are more on the conservative side, such as Nexo, which like we have a very simple model of, uh, you know, borrowing money from clients and extending that to the retail and the institution. It's a slightly higher rate, which is, you know, uh, uh, well, a heaven for stability. Uh, and uh, I think these three asset classes are going to perform uh, quite well uh, during the next, well, not only the bull run, but I would say during the next decade. Okay. Um, so what about by geography looking at companies? So we have a few U.S. companies that have gotten in. Um, we have Meitu, which is based in China, and bought Ether. Um, so are there countries where you see other companies open to purchases or kind of thinking about it? Well, that's a hard one, uh, quite honestly. And I'm not, I want some credit for <laughs> saying, I don't know, because like, you know, uh, people in the industry, <laughs> they appear to know all the answers. So quite frankly, I don't know. What I know for certain is that, you know, uh, the countries and the sovereign, uh, the, the, the sovereign states, they're going to be pushing their own agenda via uh, digital versions of their existing fiat currencies. And they will, this will be always the number one priority. This is one of the, 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 the most valuable tools a government and a central bank can have the ability to control its own money. Now, this obviously runs into a certain extent, a conflict with, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the whole ethos, ethos of uh, Bitcoin and some of the other cryptocurrencies. So there is a, a programmed, uh, uh, programmed <laughs> conflict between uh, the, those different asset classes and whatever nations allocate, it will be out of the necessity to protect, uh, uh, you know, against other uh, countries and actors, uh, 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 you know, uh, the, 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 the own balance sheet with uh, the way that Bitcoin is uh, uh, performing and also partially as a hedge, but always number one pri priority for China will be the digital yuan. Uh, you know, the United States, you know, they have a more uh, liberal view on it. I am quite... Uh, um, closely following the latest development development since the shift in uh, leadership at the uh, office of the control of the currency, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, directly below the, uh, um, the, uh, the Treasury Department. Really interesting what is going on there because we had the previous uh, the uh, chairman, you know, allowing banks to have uh, uh, they essentially allowed them custody of crypto assets, most notably uh, Bitcoin, which was a major boost. Now, uh, it was Bloomberg and a few other, uh, such as Coindesk, that reported something that was very, very uh, crucial uh, to, you know, the whole dynamics of the space. And it is the fact that the new chairman is going to revise some of those policies, stating that not all stakeholders have been consulted. So this will be very, very interesting to watch. And this will give us a sense of what individual countries are going to do. And, you know, it's usually the United States uh, taking the lead, China trying to compete with that and everyone else uh, following suit. So uh, to wrap up something that I said, I don't know and talk three minutes about it. Uh, this is going to be very important news to follow because this will give us the sign as to what will happen next. Okay, and um, we do just have about 90 seconds left, but just really quickly, what is your take on the developments and the statements out of China in the past week? Well, I uh, am uh, also yearning for the moment where the seventh ban of crypto in China would be non-news. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, <laughs> the market uh, uh, did not uh, share my skepticism of how important that is. Uh, but it was a perfect storm. You know, we had Elon Musk uh, retrace, retracting some of his statements, you know, China and then, uh, you know, various regulators making statements. So it's, it's not just one thing. Uh, well, I think it is uh, very, very crucial and important and actually a positive thing is that 
Uh, China has always been, uh, you know, accused of holding a very large portion of the hash power, of the mining power, which uh, underpins uh, uh, the Bitcoin infrastructure. Some rotation of the miners out of China and into other countries where it's also more, uh, who are also more sustainable in terms of energy production and consumption will be a positive thing and it will help Bitcoin clean up its act so that we can have Bitcoin yet again be the blue-eyed child of crypto. <laughs> Great. Well, Anthony, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. As always, really appreciate this discussion. Okay, um, Dominic and Lawrence, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, guys. Hey, Dominic, how are you? Hey, how'd you, how'd, good, how good. That was fun. Yeah, we're making it through the day. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, that I, was a really nice one. I, I, I thought it was definitely interesting what he said about, uh, you know, institutions that, that their entry into the market is still a bit off uh, sometime to come. Um, yeah. I, I think that perfectly dovetails tail into our next, uh, our next topic. Um, so uh which of course is the the growth of uh, regulated crypto investment products um yeah. and uh talking about like market infrastructure and things like that and uh exchange traded products so uh that it was very nice to hear from from anthony at nexo uh they are our sponsor today um so let's uh let's take a couple of seconds uh to get everything uh in order for our next session sounds good <laughs> 